talk about the bonds of foot. So let me start with a brief introduction and uh, give you a general overview of the uh, bonds that form the uh, the foot. First of all, you have a group of bone with seven bones known as tarsal bones. So these are the uh, tarsal bones. They are seven in number. And if this is tarsal bone, this is metatarsal. I would just remind you before jumping to the metatarsal, you remember that um, carpal bones in the hand are eight, but here we call them not uh, carbon, we call them tarsal. Tarsal bone are seven, right? But the same number, metatarsal, metatarsal are five, starting uh, from the most medial one, which is uh, to the uh, uh, related to the uh, great toe. So one, two, three, and so on until you reach number uh, five. And phalanges, Phalanges, guys, we have uh, 14. Each toe has three phalanges, uh, except the great toe, which has two, uh, just has uh, uh, two phalanges. Otherwise, the uh, rest of the uh, toes uh, have three phalanges. One, two, three, and we'll talk more about that so uh, yes uh, we have seven tarsal bones and by age of five uh, almost uh, of these uh, uh, bones uh, will ossified and you can divide them into three groups so you have proximal group which is the talus and calcaneus and you have intermediate uh, one which is the navicular bone and you have a distal group which is uh, that includes the three cuneiform bones in addition to cuboid right so this is the distal uh, this study group and this is the proximal group and this is the intermediate we have just one which is the navicular uh, bone now when you look here guys to the proximal group you will see very important bone here which is the talus this is the talus and this is the only um, uh, the only tarsal bone that uh, articulates uh, with tibia and uh, uh, fibula, right? To form, of course, the ankle joint. Now, yes, um, on the other hand, in the proximal groove, we have also very important bone, which is the uh, calcaneus, which is the largest bone and form the heel. Okay. So let us start with the uh, talus. Yes, this is the talus you see here. This is lateral view. Here is a superior view, and this is uh, mostly anterior view. So this is you cannot see that the talus is the most superior uh, bone in the foot, and uh, it articulates inferiorly or it sits superior to the calcaneus you see this is the joint in between we'll talk later about that and um, it articulates the i mean the talus articulates superiorly with the tibia and fibula to form the uh, ankle joint that's superiorly but most importantly uh, again this is the talus most importantly you have to remember that the talus articulates anteriorly with the navicular bone with navicular bone but calcane uh, the calcaneus articulates anteriorly with the cuboid c with c so don't forget that and this is laterally but talus articulates with navicular and this is medially this is the medial side right this is the lateral side okay 
So let us dig deep in the talus, and when you look, uh, uh, when you look at it in general, you can I think conclude that, uh, or you can see that it looks like a snail. It looks like a snail. It's a snail shape, شكل حلزون يعني. And it has head, neck, and body. That's fine. It's like a snail. So, what's the most important features in the head? Yes, we remember that the talus anteriorly articulates with the navicular bone. That means I'm expecting to find a facet here or articular surface here to articulate with the navicular bone. So, the head has an articular surface for articulation with the navicular bone anteriorly. Let us twist this uh, bone and look from uh, and have an inferior view. So again, yes, still we can see the articular surface anteriorly of navic for navicular bone, and also the head has two facets in addition to that for navicular bone. Because you remember, it articulates inferiorly with the calcaneus, right? This is the talus and this is calcaneus. So this is the articular surface for navicular bone. So also it has two uh, facets uh, or articular surfaces uh, for articulation with the, with the calcaneus. So it has anterior and middle calcaneal surface for articulation with calcaneus inferiorly. Very simple. This is the head. Shift now to the neck. This is the neck. This is the neck. What's the most important feature in the neck is a presence of the sulcus. Look at this sulcus. This is sulcus tali. We call it sulcus tali. It's important. Yes, it's very important because it are the, because the talus articulates superiorly with uh, calcaneus inferior. I mean, the talus superiorly articulates with. Uh, uh, calcaneus inferiorly. Look at this here. Why I'm gonna talk? Uh, um, look, this is the talus, and look, this is a groove, and there is another groove here created by calcaneus. So there is a canal here, or tunnel, or sinus for blood vessels and ligaments and nerves. So this is important so let us understand how this form will simply we'll talk more about after a couple of slides but it's formed by a groove or sinus or sulcus created from talus and another one uh inferior to it by the calcaneus so they create a kind of a tunnel called tarsal uh, sinus uh, or uh, yes uh, tarsal sinus we'll talk about that so uh so this is the uh, sulcus tali, sulcus tali, sulcus because sulcus tali because from talus related to the talus bone. Okay, shift to the body. What the what are the uh, features can you can be seen in the uh, in the body? Well, simply, first of all, again, this is the. Uh, <coughs> This is the uh, body because we know that it articulates with the tibia and fibula. So you know this is the body, the distal end of tibia, and this is the medial malleolus of the tibia, and this is the lateral malleolus or the location for articulation of lateral malleolus of fibula. That means you will get three uh, uh, facets or articular surfaces. Anyway, you can see here just the that one for medial malleolus and that for distal end of tibia. We call it trochlea. And of course, there is another one here lateral to it in the uh, 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 there on the screen. The third one for the uh, lateral malleolus of fibula. So what else? Yes, laterally, you will get a process lateral process. Where is that? Unfortunately, you look into the medial side here, right? It's a medial view. So let me show you here. Where is the lateral process? Well, it's very clear here. Here is you look laterally, right? So this is the lateral process of talus. Okay. What else? 
yes, we have articular surfaces for on the body for tibia fibula and uh, posteriorly uh, you will get the third calcaneal surface. We mentioned that in the head we have anterior and middle calcaneal uh, 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 articular surfaces for calcaneus. Now also we have, not anterior and middle, we have the wrist eye which is the posterior calcaneal surface that articulates with the calcaneus. Where is that? I think you can see it here. This is the posterior calcaneal surface located here. So if you look also to the body, you will find that there is a posterior process. Yes, posterior process. This is the posterior process. The um, uh, posterior uh, process of tails also divided. Yes, this is the, the whole of this part is the posterior process of tails. This is the head. This is the neck. This is the body, and in the body you have posterior process, that means protrusion. And it has two tubercles, lateral tubercle and medial tubercle. And look in between, there is like a groove. This is a groove for a tendon of flexor hallucis longus. The flexor that flex. Your hallucis, that mean a uh, uh, big toe. Longus because it's long. So, uh, Again, it's very clear here. Yes, um, lateral tubercle, medial tubercle, and both they form something called posterior process of talus. Yes, lateral process, medial process, and this is the groove for flexor hallucis longus. I hope I didn't miss anything. Calcaneus is uh, the largest and the most posterior tarsal bone. If you look here, here is the, uh, this is the calcaneus, which is, as I mentioned, the largest and the, um, the largest tarsal bone and the most posterior um, one. And as you see here, guys, it articulates anteriorly, articulates anteriorly, the, calcane the calcaneus articulates with the cuboid, C, always remember, C with uh, C. And let us uh, back here. So this is the articular series for uh, uh, cuboid bone. That means anterior. I know you're looking to the inferior surface of the um, calcaneus. Back to the superior view here. Here's the superior view of the calcaneus. So here is anteriorly and here is most posteriorly, right? So this, uh, you will find the facet for, uh, or articular surface uh, for cuboid anteriorly. So if you look away from anterior, just move posteriorly. If you have a look to the uh, posterior surface of the heel, yes, again, this is a lateral view. This is anterior, and again, this is uh, posterior. If you uh, look to the posterior surface of the heel, you will find it, or you can divide it into three parts upper part, middle part, and lower part. In the middle part here, or to the middle part, the strongest, um, I would say, the strongest tendon on your body is the Achilles uh, tendon. Achilles tendon, or it's called also calcaneal tendon calcaneal tendon which is related to the calcaneus so the calcaneal tendon of course you can catch it you can see it you can feel it uh, it's in the in the uh, it just uh, above the heel uh, which is uh, also it's a prone always for injury we will talk about it later in the, when we cover the uh, leg anyway so the Achilles tendon or calcaneal tendon attached to the middle part of the posterior surface of the calcaneus. But let us continue now and have a look to the inferior, uh, to inferiorly and um, follow, yes, posterior surface, but inferiorly. Let us look at this. Well, better to see it inferiorly. So this is the lower part of the posterior um, uh, 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 surface of the calcaneus that's known as 
calcaneal tuberosity. So this is the calcaneal tuberosity that um, uh, gives uh, two processes, medial process and lateral process, right? And in between there's a kind of a notch here. So um, let us uh, uh, again summarize it. When you look here, uh, laterally to the calcaneus, you have the posterior surface of calcaneus can be divided into three parts the upper one, the middle, and the uh, inferior one. So the calcaneal tendon attached to the middle posterior part here. Now, the inferior part of the posterior surface of calcaneus uh, creates a kind of uh, extension or protrusion or enlargement here known as calcaneal tuberosity so also it's a prone for uh, injury and usually fractured right because it's against the ground so this calcaneal tuberosity uh, divided into medial process and lateral process so um, let us have a look to the inferior surface or you can call it a plantar surface plantar and uh, surface you can see that the uh, plantar surface anteriorly or the anterior edge of it uh, um, has a kind of a tubercle which is the calcaneal tubercle not calcaneal tuberosity calcaneal a tubercle and this tubercle you know i think you remember that the cuboid bone uh, articulates here anteriorly with the calcaneus so there is a ligament between uh, a cuboid bone and calcaneus this ligament known as plantar because it's inferior plantar calcaneo cuboidal ligament or it's known as short plantar short plantar ligament short plantar because there is long plantar let me show you here so again uh, this is the uh, 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 cuboid and this is the calcaneus and here is the um, uh, uh, calcaneal tubercle so it's an attachment for the plantar calcaneo uh, cuboidal ligament or short plantar ligament the long uh, long plantar overlaps it it's like this where is it it is the long plantar one right and this is the short one just uh, under it or you can say superior it because we are looking to the inferior surface of the foot okay um, back again when you have a look to the lateral surface of cuboid yes we, we, you can see two protruded small protruded bones the first one known as peroneal tubercle or fibular trochlea as you wish and there is another one for uh, lateral collateral uh, ligament with the fibula so the fibular trochlea you know the tendons of fibularis longus and the previous fixed to by a ligament, small ligament, to this fibular trochlea. You can call it again bironial uh, tubercle because you have bironial longus, bironial previs, or sometimes they call it fibular longus, fibular previs. So fibular, it's equal to bironial, right? Okay, so. Again, here is the uh, tendons of fibularis or peroneal uh, previs and longus. Longus will go there and attached here. So, and this is uh, fixed to the fibular trochlea here. And this is the four lateral collateral ligament. We'll talk about in the ankle joint. Back again to the calcaneus, but now we would like to have a look to the medial surface here. There is a protruded projection. You can feel it. Try to feel it, which is the known as sustentaculum tili. Sustentaculum tili that projected medially. This is number one, and it has 
a, a, a facet or articular surface for the talus and under it under it there is a groove here where is that let me show you here again this is a tentaculum tili and this is because now you look into the inferior surface right so this is the groove in which uh, tendon for flexor halluses flexor halluses longus uh, passes there right somebody can say okay show it me i will show you where is that this is the um look this is the calcaneus right i'm trying my best so this is the sustentaculum tili this is the medial uh this is the medial malleolus you know that's medial you're looking to the to the uh foot medially so this is sustain sustentaculum tili you can feel it by your finger just inferior to the um, medial malleolus and you can uh, uh, find here the uh, uh, tendon of flexor halluses uh, longus coming from there so there are also a couple of structures we will cover it when we talk about the foot okay okay so tentaculum what else here uh, yes, I think lastly we have the superior surface. Look into the calcaneus from superiorly. Well, simply you have, art do you remember the um, articular surfaces on the uh, talus? Because you know this is the talus and this is calcaneus. So there are a couple of, there are three articular uh, surfaces. Uh, for talus, right? So you have anterior and posterior, and of course you have the middle one, which is on sustentaculum tali. They consider it part from the medial side, but it's okay. At the end of the day, you have three articular surfaces: anterior, middle, and posterior um, talar articular surfaces for the talus to articulate above uh, the uh, articulate with the calcaneus superiorly okay one still we have very important one thing here which is a kind of um, uh, 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 sulcus do you remember the um, neck of the talus this is the talus this is the head and this is the neck and there is here if you remember a small like uh, sulcus known as sulcus tali we mentioned that in the talus sulcus tali but also there is another um, uh, uh, sulcus which is related to the calcaneus known as calcaneal sulcus look at it here this is the calcaneal sulcus this is calcaneal sulcus so when the talus articulates with it so both creates a kind of a canal or sinus known as tarsal sinus this is the tarsal sinus made by calcaneal sulcus inferiorly and sulcus tali superiorly both they form the tarsal uh, tarsal uh, sinus now tarsal sinus or sinus uh, tarsi they cause sometimes is like uh, a tunnel again between talus and calcaneus and there is something called tarsal sinus uh, tarsal sinus let me check why it's not working okay uh, it's called tarsal uh, sinus syndrome in which you know that there is a couple of uh, there is a ligament here interosseous ligament that connects the uh, talus with um, with talus with uh, calcaneus plus vessels plus nerves. So when you overuse the foot, for example, repetitive standing or walking, or in case there is an ankle sprain or trauma, 
this canal can be narrowed and pressure can be created on these structures creating a kind of a pain also people people with a flat foot they suffered from pain usually they feel it just anterior and lower to the ankle joint this is the ankle joint for example yes it's located here so this is a calcaneal look this is an x-ray and you see the calcaneus in which there is a fracture here calcaneal fracture okay this is the talus um you know talus articulates with what with navicular bone calcaneus with the cuboid of course so uh is surface anatomy it's good to have a look on it so look at here we'll remember that this is a kind of small superstity for the base of the uh, fifth meter tarsal bone you can feel it also so at least you know where you are you know we finished the uh, uh, Talus, and we finish the calcaneus, which is uh, uh, bones related to the or part from the proximal group of tarsal bones. Now we have just one intermediate tarsal bone known as navicular bone. This is a navicular bone like pouch shape, as I mentioned. Most importantly, to know that it's located on the medial side of the foot, medial side. So it's located medially, and you have to know that the cuboid laterally right so back to the navicular bone importantly also i would like to focus on the articulation of navicular bone posteriorly it articulates with the talus but anteriorly and i would say laterally it articulates with the distal group of tarsal bones including the the cuneiform bones medial intermediate and lateral plus sometimes with the cuboid bone so this is the uh, navicular bone location and articulation and importantly it has a tuberosity protruded medially you can feel it also on your on the middle side of your um, foot I will show you this navicular tuberosity for attachment of posterior tibial tendon for the posterior tibial uh tendon let me show you here yes here is if you remember that sustentaculum uh tail eye of calcaneus you can feel it inferior to the median median medialis also anterior to it there is a navicular tuberosity this is the navicular bone and this is the navicular tuberosity you can touch it right you can feel it so it's for attachment of posterior tibial tendon Lastly, uh, about the tarsal bones, we have three cuneiform bones and laterally the cuboid. The cuboid articulates posteriorly with the calcaneus, as I mentioned. Medially, it articulates with the laterally cuneiform bone because you have medially cuneiform, intermediate cuneiform, and laterally cuneiform. The laterally cuneiform bone articulates with the cuboid and anteriorly the cuboid articulates with the lateral two metatarsals this is first metatarsal second third fourth and fifth metatarsal bone so each cuneiform bone articulates with the um, with one uh, metatarsal bone respectively and the cuboid articles with the last lateral two metatarsal which is important to know i like the arrangement because when you know the arrangement you know this is medial this is lateral these articulates with the front and back you understand what's going on especially when you look to the x-ray you can tell what's this bone and what's that okay now look to the um uh, a tendon for fibularis longus muscle which is which that comes laterally 
uh, from here and passes in this groove here because you look to the inferior surface of the foot here so then it passes here until it reaches the uh, cuneiform the medial cuneiform and the base of the first metatarsal Yeah, we mentioned that, nothing to say about that. Now, lastly guys, we have five metatarsal bones and 14 phalanges. The metatarsal bones are of course long bones with the phalanges as well. And they are numbered from medial to lateral. So you give the metatarsal bone number one to the uh, to that of to the meter tarsal of the big toe then number two three four in latin and five which is laterally uh, you notice that the first meter tarsal bone is the largest one and it's located medially each meter tarsal if you look at it it has base shaft head base shaft it, or you can say proximal shaft and distal it's up to you shifting to the uh, phalanges you have 14 uh, for the regarding the big two you have two phalanges this is the proximal one and distal one otherwise each toe uh, has three phalanges proximal middle distal proximal middle distal and so forth right so uh, each phalanx also has base shaft uh, and head thank you